He's a sledgehammer. Dang! You got shocks, pegs, lucky. You ever take it off any sweet jumps? You got like three feet of air that time. So how are we all bloody doing? So this is news with basket. Some of you might watch the news, get a little bit bored of it. They talk a load of crap and that, a load of lies and that, but I feel like in the last week, there's been a lot of news locally. Uh, I need to shave and cut my hair, but that's shit news. I'm actually watching uh, Scotty Cramner's channel, build your own BMX pegs. Uh, it's not going right straight away. They're using PVC pipe, which is um, never a good start. But uh, you'll learn one day, boys. So anyway, hey. So news with Basket. That was quite good, wasn't it? So uh, first thing, kind of an uplifting story, positive. Ryan is finally recovering. He spent three days in hospital. He uh, he got the money from his GoFundMe. I actually set up a GoFundMe. It reached its target. He's got the money. He bought the new helmet. He got the new sort of Fox helmet. It looks sick extra protecting all that and uh he's up he's walking around i think he's still got another week off of work so yeah thank you everyone that contributed to that gofundme uh legends so yeah ryan is recovering he'll be back on it soon get well soon ryan you're bad man so staying on that kind of vibe there is another guy another local rider that i need to set up a gofundme for i'm gonna set up a gofundme for it's set up uh, you'll find it in the description below. You'll find it pinned in the comments. Will Wiggins, absolute legend. He spent a big amount of time on my channel when I first ever started it. Will Wiggins and his Jeggins. Those that have been here for a while remember Will Wiggins and his Jeggins. Uh, he decided to go street riding without me, which is always a silly idea. And he literally destroyed his knee. And... Uh, there is some harsh footage coming in right now. Some of you are not going to really like it, but it's kind of the aftermath of his knee and the operation that he had to have and the actual crash clip, which is a, is a really silly crash clip, but it's just one of those ones that don't look bad, but obviously was really bad for him. Fatima Kafim. I said cool. Yes. They did the hamstring drops. So. Mm. Mm. We'll, we'll take that off, okay? Yeah. The dressing. Change it to a fresh one. Well, we'll not do too much just because of that. But you're fine on What about work crutches? Can I do that? You can, but it'll be sore and it'll probably make you more sore than it would be. You're brave. <laughs> So yeah, he's been in full rehab for ages now, trying to get that knee back, and this, uh, he just can't ride at the moment. So I set up a GoFundMe page to get him a knee brace. With a knee brace, a decent one, a high-end one, he'll be able to ride again, at least pedal around. So he can come back out, he might be able to do some filming and stuff like that, at least sort of, at least come out and do some cycling with the boys, because uh, he's not pedaled around in about a year, and uh, yeah, his knee is still a bit of a mess. So yeah, that GoFundMe page, like I said, I've linked it below and it's pinned in the comments. And if I can do stuff like that to support my riders and people that are on the scene with me, I'm bloody doing it. I mean, this is a perfect format to do that. I always said the whole Patreon thing is a matter of money to help me out with my channel, but also help out riders as well. And uh, if it sort of gets to that stage, then you'll see it. You'll be able to sort of talk to me through the whole Patreon page, see where that money goes and stuff. And uh yeah, be onto a blinder, mate. Moving on. I'll bloody sit here, be easier. Proper news presenter, proper news reader. So yeah, I've moved into front of Grace's light to sort of uh, do some better talking. So yeah, my news items I feel are gonna be sort of uh, very interesting. You're gonna laugh at some of them. Some of them are just crazy and it's a lot better than the news at 10. because they just talk crap and stuff. So here we bloody go. Some girl got stuck on top of the vert ramp at Steeple Grove. Some skateboarders sent me some footage and stuff, sent me some pictures and that. The funny thing is about it, 
on the side of the vert ramp, it says no ladders. So this girl somehow got on top of the vert ramp, couldn't get down, refused to come down the actual ramp itself, phoned the bloody fire brigade, and the fire brigade had to come out, set the ladders up, help her down. Not even shitting you, not even making that up. And uh, I can't, I just couldn't believe it. I literally thought it was a joke, but uh, it's definitely true. There's pictures, there's videos. And um, honestly, if I was a fireman turning up to that, I would have sprayed her on my hose. 100%. Full burst. Bang. Knock her down. Silly bitch. Literally, the parents should be disgusted with shit like that. She was able to get on top of the ramp, but then refused to get down. And I'm pretty sure she actually phoned the fire brigade. And uh, what a waste of bloody time. I remember when I was about 11 years old, I climbed a massive oak tree. And as I came down from this oak tree, a branch snapped. And I was kind of hanging on this branch. I must have been about 20 foot up. My mates at the bottom absolutely pissing themselves. I thought it was hilarious. I had three options. Ring the fire brigade. Not a chance. Wait for my mates to stop laughing. They go get a ladder. Not a chance. Third one jump so i jumped and uh, i pretty much need myself in the face bleeding nose all that but as i laid down on the floor my mate's still laughing i said i would rather go to hospital than have the fire brigade come and get me that was kind of like my mentality so uh when i went back on the estate after all the lads and that all the girls now they're like oh my god basket jumped out of a tree from like 20 foot i was like yeah bleeding nose and all that missing teeth but if i went back to that estate and told everyone the fire brigade had to rescue me from that tree. How embarrassing. So uh, yeah, if you decide to climb on the vert ramp at Staple Grove in Taunton, just slide down the bloody ramp. Slide down the ramp. It's actually got transition. You can just slide down the bloody thing. Don't ring the fire brigade. I didn't have transition. I was in a fucking tree. I had to jump out to flat. How about that? So you think that story's kind of funny, interesting. Uh, I took a group of riders in Kingscliff recently, showed them around and stuff. I actually did the video. Uh, on Sunday, I'm pretty sure it was on Sunday, I was in Wimberball, so it wasn't me. But another mountain biker from that group went back into Kingscliff and uh, a naked man was running around. If anyone knows about this, if it was your dad, you know, drop a comment below, don't be embarrassed. But if it was your dad, just tell him to calm down a little bit. If it was you, calm down a little bit. But uh, yeah, there was a naked man running around Kingscliff. And I'm pretty sure it was on Sunday. Might have been Saturday. Pretty sure it was Sunday. And uh, yeah, this rider must have thought, what the bloody hell? Went for a little quiet ride. Naked man comes running out. A couple of dog walkers seen him as well. Because uh, some other mountain biker I spoke to heard about the same story. And uh, yeah, the police had to get him, rugby tackle him, arrest him and all that stuff. So yeah, watch out when you're in Kingscliff for the uh, naked men. The other day I went in there, I seen the little squirrels and that, all cute and that with their nuts. And that guy seen a naked man with his nuts. So, uh, <laughs> crazy old world, isn't it? So, to the final story. I mean, I've had some bangers and that. What have we had so far? Well, we've had a girl stuck on a vert ramp. We've had a naked man in Kingscliff. So, recently, I had a crash. If you remember that crash, I hurt my shoulder. It was pretty bad. Oh my God. Jeez. So that crash sounded bad, really hurt me. I was out for a little bit. Warren came along, one up me. His crash, a lot worse. <laughs> but here comes Madman Lewis. He likes to one up people. And uh, you have my crash, Warren's crash. And then Lewis had his crash. So that, that was supposed to be this video. That's what it's turned into a kind of a news thing. He's on night shifts. I work day shifts. The whole plan was, I was to finish at four, get over to the woods, meet him. He was building this line by himself. I had no play in this line. I've not dug nothing on this line. It was all his idea. When I first looked at it, I thought, you're off your head, mate. I'm saying that. I said, you're off your head, mate. He was expecting me to sort of train down with him. I was like, not, not even going anywhere near it, not touching it. He asked me to measure it. It was 45 foot. That's the back wheel, just getting in, 45 foot. Me and mate Dave measured it the other day. Dave might pop up in the comments. 
he will be uh, my witness. We measured this gap, it was 45 foot, and uh, to get in safely, fully, 50 foot. So there was a 50 foot gap hidden in the woods, and uh, it made no sense to me. I kept walking towards it, I said, don't make any sense, don't make any sense. I said, the jump needs to be longer and all that stuff. So Lewis went in the woods, cleared this trail during the day. When I finished work at four, I was gonna head straight over to the woods, film him attempting it. He was gonna get some money out of it as well. I always said, if you're gonna do some crazy shit, beyond my level, beyond anything I wanna do, I'll pay you for it. So uh, there was gonna be 20 quid in it. Obviously I didn't end up filming it. He wanted to do a warm up before I turned up. I haven't even seen him since. Uh, he messaged me saying he's a little bit hurt because he had no knee pads on. And uh, oh my God, so doing a jump of that sort of size, and a pair of joggers, and just a full face, I think he's wearing gloves, and uh, yeah, so he literally jumped 45 foot to the nose case. So the plan was to go over there, film the whole setup, show you what we were dealing with, and then obviously he was gonna attempt it and all that sort of stuff, or hopefully he was gonna land it. So he needs a week off now, he's saying, because he's a bit injured, recover, and then he's gonna go back in there and try it again. I'm not too sure. Obviously, I'm not even gonna go in there and actually film the gap, film the jump from different angles and stuff yet, unless he's actually gonna try it again, because uh, at the moment, it's just mental. That clip his friend filmed on a phone does not do it justice. Um, you can kind of see he's come from a hell of a height, but because the jump's up on the bank, it doesn't really show how wide the actual jump is, but it's 45 foot just to get in. And it doesn't even show how tight the landing is. You've literally got to land tight between two trees. There's one massive tree, really big to the left, and there's one to the right that's kind of like fallen down. It's like the end of like a, a stump, which uh, he said he was going to try and move, but I don't think he could. And then it goes real tight around the corner. So you're literally jumping from full speed, 45, 50 foot, to then try and creep around the corner. And at all the places he could have chose, he chose that one. And it's mainly so not everyone could do it, which I can understand. I'm pretty sure he's the only one who's ever going to try that jump. I'm not going anywhere near it. You couldn't even give me five grand to try it. Um, well, I might just body armor right up and just crash and die and I get five grand, but yeah, it's, it's next level. Any jump that goes past 40 foot is next level. I mean, that canyon gap, me and him did, that worked out about 33, 34 foot. So you're talking another 10 foot on top of that, but with a really tight landing. And uh, yeah, you've got to wear your pads. When doing stuff like that, you've got to wear knee pads. And I think that's the only thing he's actually hurting now is his knees. He literally slid down his knees down the little embankment. Uh, not sure what his bike's like. I've not heard much back from him. He just sent me that clip and said that he's in a bit of pain. So hopefully I can find out more and probably have to set up a GoFundMe for Lewis for some knee pads and maybe some new kneecaps. So yeah, that is the basket news. I felt like I had a lot of stories to tell you. Um, yeah, Lewis definitely wins it, the whole story's on that. He definitely beats the naked man. He definitely beats the girl being stuck on top of the vert ramp. Like I said, if he's gonna try that jump again, we'll film all the angles and stuff. I'll show you the setup and all that, but for now, I'm kind of not saying too much more about it. So I don't sort of jinx it. I'll give you more info on how his bike is and how his body is tomorrow, because as I'm talking to you now, that crash happened about a half hour ago. Like I say, I was supposed to meet him about a half hour ago to uh, film all that, but he tried doing a little warm up before I turned up. And uh, I got sent that clip from someone's phone and uh, he's actually spoke to me since and he said his knees hurt real bad. And just to put it in perspective, he's got work in a few hours. So uh, he did all that, jumps to that, crashes like that, goes home, has a bath, sleeps for about an hour, and he's on a 12 hour night shift tonight. So uh, that's just uh, mentality beyond. So yeah, what did you think of the basket news? Any good? You want any more sort of uh, news like that? I do them from time to time when there's um, some good news appearing about on the local scene. A little bit better than Michael Fish, you know? Trevor McDonald, never beat that guy, what a legend. But uh, maybe one day I'll be there, news presenter chatting shit on TV, telling you all the lies and stuff, all about the wars and all that crap, and I'll sort of sneak in with my own little stories. Boom, 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 Lewis eats shit again. Poor old Lewis, put some knee pads on, son. So I've got to finish this video off with a nice light-hearted story. So I came in this kitchen the other day, right, make a nice cup of tea, 
poor old Grace was a little bit upset. I thought, what's wrong? What's wrong with our Grace? And she explained that because I got home too late from somewhere, I can't remember where I was too. I got home a little bit late and uh, my dinner was getting cold. So she put the saucepan in the oven to keep it warm. And she forgot to take the lid off the saucepan. So uh, the lid melted away. It's her favorite lid. Yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, a bit mangled up and stuff. Cause, Cause it was her favorite lid, really upset. I said, Grace, I'm an engineer, dear. I'll sort you right out. So I went in the garage, had a little think about things, and I came up with this. So as you can see, I uh, adapted the situation, sorted her right out, just as a biker, engineer, would. Uh, it ain't stupid if it works. And uh, what I did, I passed her back the lid, and I said, don't go breaking it. Don't go breaking it, because it's a brake pad but it works. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Bloody hell, basket in the news. And um, yeah, if you uh, ever melt your uh, saucepan lid, just put a brake pad on it. It's all right, isn't it? Don't go breaking it. <laughs> Don't break it.